Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Ed's Auto Garage. Again, Ed Arango here coming to you live from within my garage here in Huntington Beach, California. Um, today, I have a really special guest coming all the way from England um, live um, today, and she is uh, Zoe Whitaker, and uh, we will I'll be talking to her in a minute and you guys will get to learn what it is exactly she does, which I think is fascinating. And it's not really something we see too much here in the States. I don't think I, you know, I'm sure somebody will chime in and say, Hey, I do it over here or something like that, but we'll see. But let me go ahead. And before we get started on that, as you guys are probably uh, aware uh, I've kind of been beating you guys with a stick over the head with this one, but coming up June the 5th in Chino Hills, California, the Friends of Steve McQueen car show is coming up. It's not too late to get your car uh, registered for display. It doesn't have to be a Mustang. It doesn't have to be a Porsche. You can register any vehicle that you have that you want to display. It's not a hoity-toity, fussy uh, uh, concourse. There's all levels of, of, of trophies that are going to be giving out and uh, judging and prizes. Um, and on top of that, it really goes to a good cause, which is uh, the Boys Republic uh, School, um, which is a nonprofit for for kind of underprivileged uh, kids. Um, and it's not just boys any longer, it's boys and girls now. Um, but uh, the school started, I believe, in like 1907 or something like that. Steve McQueen was a student there. Um, Steve McQueen was kind of a rambunctious kind of difficult kid growing up, but after he was successful, he kind of looked back and saw that, hey, that school kind of set me in my straight and narrow. So he was always very supportive of the school and donated and, and gave a lot of his uh, earnings to the school. So uh, we want to continue supporting the, uh, the facility in the school and the, and the car event. So again, um, the Friends of Steve McQueen Car Show, visit stevemcqueencarshow.com for more details. Again, June the 5th, it's coming up. Get your vehicle registered. It's a good time. So today, like I said, I have Zoe Whitaker. Is that correct, Zoe? Yeah. Have I pronounced your last That's name correct. correctly? Yeah. Um, and Zoe is coming to us from uh, England. And Zoe has a, um, a business, I guess you can kind of call it, um, that, that is tour driving or taking folks for des designated drives or scheduled out drives. Um, welcome, Zoe, to the show. Thank you so much for being my guest here today. No, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Sure. So, Zoe, before we get going, why don't you kind of tell everybody, kind of bring everybody up to speed a little bit on your background, how you got you know involved in the whole car space um i think you had some racing heritage behind you yeah why don't you kind of let us know what 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 zoe's all about so i um i got obsessed with classic cars from the age of 11 years old i heard um this what sounded like an, it was just an amazing noise coming up our drive and then this big red thing appear which i just thought was the most beautiful thing in the world my dad had just bought a 1966 Corvette Stingray. Oh. So I just instant, instant love, absolutely fell in love with it. Um, I polished it, I cleaned it, I sat in it, I did everything in it. Um, and then um, I realized I'm a twin and I realized that the Corvette only has two seats. <laughs> when you're a twin, you have to compete for time on your own with your dad. <laughs> So um, I did everything in this car with dad. And from about the age of 14, I was, um, well, we have rallies over here, classic car rallies, um, where you have a book and you follow tu tulip directions, which are little symbols, arrow symbols that tell you whether to go left or right or, you know, round, up or down or what have you. Um, and But it's timed and it's all very, very competitive and you've got to get to a checkpoint by a certain time and stuff. And I started doing that with him. Um, so that, and then I started doing that in the UK. Then I did it in Europe. And 
it just became it was always Paul and the Blondes, you know, because I was literally the only girl doing it at the time. I'm very young as well, not many, you know, not many young people. Then my dad got into racing single seaters, um, which is for you guys, it's like an indie car. Sure. Um, or an indie, you know, or a, or a Formula One car, as you guys know, now know, but much, much smaller, smaller engines and everything, but still open wheel. Um, and then I got hooked into that. <laughs> kind of like Lotus not... type, little Lotus type cars. Yeah, like a Lotus. Can... Do, do you know? Um, yeah, like a um, little Cosworth yeah. type engines. Yes, exactly. So we had, we did, we, some of them were Cosworth, um, small Cosworth engines, but um, you know, re really they were. Um, I, I can't really. Sh I, it's no point showing me a photo because the, the guys that are listening can't can't see it. But, um, <laughs> It is literally like what I used to, you know, do you get the Matchbox toy, toy cars? Oh, yeah, I've got a ton yeah. of them up here. <laughs> so it's, like, it's like, I always call it, it's like a Matchbox version of Formula of a Formula One car, so. Yeah, yeah, let me see, do I have, oh, well, my nephew comes around and steals them all, so I think they're all gone up there. The, the oh, Formula yeah, one. and then goes playing with them. Um, yeah. yeah. So I got into that, and I loved the racing, and then um, I then on some of the rallies that I did in Europe with my dad there were kind of a couple of circuits and the very first uh, race circuit was Monza in Italy and um, I think I was 17 I'd literally just I was learning to drive anyway I don't even think I'd passed my driving test because um, we start a lot, lot later than you guys in America and I and dad was going around this was part of the rally and you got to go around the circuit we were in the Corvette and I said to dad, oh, go on, let's have, a, let me have a go. Because I, I was kind of learning clutch control and everything at home and stuff. So he got out of the car and I got out of the car and I, I he got out of the driver's side and I thought he was going to get in the passenger side. And he said, no, if you're going to go, off you go on your own. Oh, wow. And I absolutely loved it. I just went round and round and round and round and round. And he thought, he, what he didn't tell me was the car was overheating. We hardly had any, put, any petrol and there was no tread on the tyres. <laughs> so he said he just thought I was going to scare myself and that was you know and you get out of it and you're like I'm done I loved it absolutely loved it came out and went that was brilliant you know <laughs> um and then I got more into the classic car racing um and ideally I wanted to be a racing driver I desperately wanted to be a racing driver but you know you know 25 nearly 25 years ago it was just it was just uncalled nearly 30 years it was just uncalled for 30 years ago it was uncalled for for a female to be racing because you it was very hard to get sponsorship because corporate companies didn't want to be seen as if if an accident happened to me in a car they didn't want to be seen as as, a, as hurting a female or putting a female in jeopardy which i totally totally get yeah they totally didn't want to be get. the culprit with yeah, you know, something which, going wrong with it, you Exactly. Um, I couldn't afford to do it by myself. It literally is so expensive. Um, it is. So, um, yeah, so I decided I was going to go and join a race team. <laughs> so, so you I did. Join, so you ended up so you ended up actually racing then for a while. So I did some classic car racing, but then I went to go and work for Formula One. So I worked for an absolutely fantastic company called British American Tobacco. And they sponsored, um, um, they, they had the, the Lucky Strike BAR Honda team. So it was Lucky Strike. So, um, and we ran that car until we couldn't advertise tobacco on cars anymore. Um, oh, yeah. So I did that for 14 years and absolutely loved it. And then went, came out of that and then decided, right, I'm going to go back into racing. By this time, I was still doing classic car racing and, drives and then I went back and did some more classic car racing um and then I worked a couple of times with some people that were setting up accounts um because that was when we knew that Formula One was being sold to Liberty Media and it was we had huge accounts um you know Pernod Ricard and Diageo and all these accounts and I kind of helped with all that and um which was great, but I just wanted to be back in the car and on the road again. I kind of thought I've done all the corporate racing motorsport side of it now. I want to do my own thing. Um, and I couldn't afford to do the classic car rallies that I was doing with my dad by myself because there was that 
they're very much for the elitist um, here. They're, they're, they're a brilliant thing to do, but you have to have a car in period. Um, you have to have rally experience, really good rally experience. And not many of my, none of my friends had rally experience unless I went with, with my dad's mates. Um, you know, they're, they're so expensive. They can be four or 5,000, even just in the UK for a, for two or three day um, drive. If you want to go abroad, you've then got to ship your car and then you've got to pay for accommodation. And uh, it just adds, you're into the t sometimes 10,000, you know? Yeah. Um, and I just desperately, desperately wanted to do it. And I didn't own a, a classic car in period either. They were like, yes. Yeah, they're in the hundred grand bracket these cars so I thought you know what and I used to get the old rally books that I used to have that my dad and I did that I kept from when we did rallies and I just used to simplify them and go off for a drive with my friends um, and use them with my friends we just go out, out of my little Ford Fiesta 1.1 you know, go out in that and go for a little drive or you know my friend my friend's little Renault Clio or something you know little yeah. cars yeah little basic yeah. little 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 subcompact type little cars absolutely yeah. so I kind of thought you know what I kind of really want to do this didn't think anything of it and then at one stage all my friends we decided to have a trip to Paris um you know, we, there was six of us, four of them went on a flight and two of us drove. And um, so we went three days earlier and made a trip to it from the UK to Paris. God, we had more fun in those three days driving than we did in the weekend that we were at Paris. <laughs> um, and then on the way back, <laughs> we had five people in the car because they didn't want to miss out on the fun on the way on the drive home. Oh, we, wow. had, we were talking about it so much. So I thought, you know what, I'm, there's a gap in the market here. Um, and then I started doing simplified rally books. Um, so they're just intermediate distances. You say, you know, in 0 0.1 miles, turn right at the Wagon and Horses pub, you know, or, you know, it's really, really simple. Um, so I started doing, and then I did that for a couple of friends and then for a corporate company for a charity event. And it just looked, everybody loved it. And then somebody got hold of the book and um, a club here, Porsche Club, the Porsche Club Great Britain got hold of the book and said, look, can you produce these for our, for our members? And that's exactly how it, how it set off. And ever since then, I haven't even advertised yet. I'm still working on my website and I'm just getting loads of work in. People just, people quite like having these custom books um, rather than following a sat nav, they've got somebody saying, and they're really simple. You don't have, the navigator doesn't have to have their face in a book the whole time. They're really simple. Loads of symbols on them. So, you know, when a fuel, a, a, you know, a gas station's coming up or a coffee shop's coming up or a cafe's coming up or, you know, something nice to look at's coming up. Um, so the whole premise of it, the whole premise of, of, these rallies you guys have over there which we really don't see here is basically you you have a group of people and you start in one you, you start together at one destination and maybe time them out yeah as they leave yeah that's right and then for the for, for my for not not for my rallies because they're, they're not competitive but for the classic car rallies and normal rallies yeah you get timed out and you've got to get to a certain checkpoints along the route within a certain amount of time and they are very very tiring so for the navigator they're looking at what we call a trip meter so you have one one clock that has the full mileage on and one that has the intermediate mileage so you have to keep resetting the intermediate mileage then you've got a stopwatch as well and you've got so you've got to watch the stopwatch because you've got to get to the to certain points within a certain time and you've got to be looking at the book and navigating as well i'm, so assu I'm assuming that when you're going from like point a to point b or point b to c that that distance is calculated based on on what would be the speed limit for that distance correct absolutely so that you're not you're not speeding and getting in no, trouble you're not you shouldn't no you shouldn't have and actually you get penalized if you get to the checkpoints too early too early yeah oh, i could see that and yeah you, 
Yeah. Um, and then um, you get points added on if you get there too early and points added on if you get there too late. So the end of the, the, the whole thing is, is you've got to get to the end destination with the least amount of points. Got it. Um, How interesting. That seems like, like it would be a fun, a fun type of challenging event instead of just let's take a drive up the coast and drink it. You know, that's what we do here. Yeah. So that's what I do. So instead of that, I, I, my books are, are very similar to that. So you have to start, every, they, they all revolve around food. <laughs> <laughs> so you all start, you know, if, if you want to do, and you can, you can choose the length of time. So you could do an afternoon, you could do a full day. You can just do the more a morning. You can do two days. You can do a whole weekend. You can do a whole week. You can just link all the routes together. Um, but um, they start off with a breakfast and somewhere nice for breakfast, for argument's sake. And then you go for a nice drive to a coffee stop, you know, mid-morning coffee um, and that all essential pea stop. And then lunch stop, you know, and then, you know, you carry And if you want to carry on, then there's an afternoon stop or, you know, another drive to a, a dinner stop. And but it's not timed, but you still have that element of, oh, you know what I saw. So that's the one thing. The good thing is, is when you've got a group of people going out and they all stop for mid morning coffee, they went, oh my God, I saw you turning left too soon. And I didn't know whether I'd got their instructions wrong. So we followed you. And then, and it's just the banter that goes on is, is, is great. And it's, and that's what they're all about. It's the social side of it. And right. It's people talking and, you know, and it's physically getting people out in the cars and driving rather than them just turning up and having a cup of coffee, you know? It's, so, um, so, so Zoe, do you, I mean, is the plan for you to, to, um, um, advertise one of these drives or one of these events on a, on a designated day. Let's say you said on June the 1st, we're going to be leaving from so-and-so show up yeah. by six in the morning or whatever, eight in the yes. morning. So and, they then, have to, yes. and, and they don't necessarily have to be a club. They could just no. be whoever. And that's what we, we did. We, there's no clubs. There's no membership. There's no nothing. And whichever car you have it doesn't matter what car you have or if you want to come on a bike and on a motorbike and come and follow <laughs> us we don't care just come along come out and have but, fun yeah but i do say you need to register so when my website goes live next month i'll have all the drives available um but for those in the uk i have drives going from Bowcliff hall in weatherby so just contact those guys and they can tell you um, and then also from the carding shed here in Yorkshire and in, in, I live in home first. So the last Saturday, um, I do a drive with retro talk. So all they have to do is sign up with retro talk and sign up and then they can come along. So, and if, if we get oversubscribed, we'll just do it the next day. So we'll do it last Saturday every single month for retro talk. And then if we're oversubscribed, the next lot, well, we could do a drive, say on the Sunday. So the same drive, but on a Sunday instead, or a different so, day. So I assume that they, they're they they're basically on the weekends. It'll be a Saturday or a Sunday no, type of a drive. They, no? My, my, no, quite a lot of the times I do them on a Thursday because oh. people quite like a Thursday because the roads are not as busy or they've got family commitments at the weekends. Oh, okay. Um, the Thursdays are really, really good days to go out. Um, or we, yeah, we do them midweek or like they do, they eventually they'll be able to um, purchase one of my routes, them, one of my route books. I'll just post them to them and they can go off and do it themselves. They can, you know, go in with a group of mates and do it four or five cars and they can go off and organize with them, you know, organize their own little group of friends to go off or they could just do it with a, their partner or, a family member mm -hmm. yeah it's anybody I'm doing anybody um but most people tend to like me to guide the drives or be there with them because it feels a bit more yeah mm -hmm. is um is there is there um is there a a a way that somebody can come from maybe not from 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 England 
and maybe might be on on vacation or holiday in England and they go, when I really like to take a tour, but I don't have a car here. How do I find a car to take or, or yeah, how do they can, Yeah, they can. They don't have to have a classic car. They can have a higher car here in the UK very so, easily. Like a yeah. rental car. Yeah. yeah. Come in a rental car and do it in a rental car. We honestly, we don't care. It's not just for classic cars. We don't care what car you have. Got it. Um, as long as it's legally, it's legal to go on the road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> we honestly, we really don't care. So we, in Home First recently, I had a whole load of vintage tractors come and do one of my drives. So. <laughs> it <laughs> took three days. Well, yeah, they only had to. I think they did about four pages of of, of my book, and that was it. Yeah. <laughs> um, tell tell us a little bit. I think this last year in in twenty twenty one, you were involved with the uh, distinguished gentleman drive. Oh yeah. That, what was that, that all about? That tell us about such, that. That was such an honor. It really was. Um, it was so distinguished gentleman's ride. Um, is a charity event for motorbikes, classic motorbikes, um, to raise money for men's health. And they've been doing, it's, it's quite well established now. And on a certain day, every single uh, one, on, on, a, on a certain day, they've, they've literally, the next one's coming up soon. So if you go on Instagram, Google gentlemen's, distinguished gentlemen's ride, it'll tell you the dates. On Instagram, okay. On Instagram, yeah. Um, and um, in fact, I can probably Google it now, but it's, it's um, everybody dresses up dap, all in dapper outfits and um, they go out for, a, for a, a drive. But the thing is, is that everybody that registers and signs up, they then raise money. So they get people to sponsor them um, to, um, to uh, go on the drive. So all the money then, every single bit of, every single bit of money raise goes straight to men's health so whether it's to support mental health or prostate cancer etc cetera, etc cetera. it and then so what happened because that was um so um here it is distinguished gentlemen's right and um, because that was so popular um they decided then to do classic cars so on the 25th um, of every single of 25th of September, September last year, um, globally, everybody um, went out who registered to do the drive um, in pre-1980s cars, all dressed up dapper, and we went for a drive um, and raised and raised um, several thousand pounds just for home first for our city. Um, so so was this part of was this uh, your your drive or was it, was it another, my drive? But it was it was in collaboration with the um, distinguished gentleman's drive. Got it. So these these three guys, there's three guys that have set it up, um, and they've just done such an amazing thing. They really have, and they're really raising the profile of of men's health. Instead of you having to do, I don't know whether you have it in America. They all the men have Movember. So in November. Oh yeah. Yeah, grow a mustache. Yeah, yeah, the mustache. Yeah, yeah, whatever. yeah. Yeah, but it's it's a great thing because um, you know that on the twenty fifth of September, it, it, whether you're in Madrid or New York or you know Monte Carlo or <laughs> Sydney, you know that everybody's going for this distinguished gentleman's drive to raise money for um, raise money and awareness for men's health. So do you know, do those different cities around the world, do they have designated routes that they drive or is there a, a connection in somehow? I think, or? I think on some of them, you just follow the leader. Um, okay. But I think I last, last year was the um, inaugural um, drive and I, we did a, 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 route, a route book. Um, so they followed my route book. Um, my directions and they absolutely loved it and already we've got people signed up we've, we've got 50 cars signed up for this year's event and it hasn't registration hasn't even opened so I said can you put me on the waiting list I'm like yeah but I can't really do it. you have to register when it opens <laughs> yeah, or else you're holding on to <laughs> this I will tell you yeah yeah so this year it starts from Bowcliffe Hall um 
So I do that um, from there, and it's it, which is at both Cliff Hall and Weatherby. So that'll be um, going live in August on the 25th of September. But it's, it's such a fabulous event because I think everybody likes an excuse to dress up as well. So sure, yeah. I mean, it's kind of um, um, kind of like a like a a, a quasi Goodwood type of uh, kind it's, of event. It's 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 like Goodwood revival, but on the road. But on the road, yeah, yeah. yeah. How cool! How co cool is that? Yeah. So, and I think the the good thing about me is because I did the the did the root book. Those ones that couldn't attend it, um, they just got a copy of the root, my root booklet, went off and did it, and still raised money. So we have a pot pot of money. Um, that we put into just a just giving page that will donate to Distinguished Gentlemen's Drive in September this year. So I'm assuming that Distinguished Gentlemen have a have a website or, or yeah, just other... go to Distinguished Gentlemen's Drive. Okay, and it's, it's all there, website and uh, and on the internet. So okay, all right, good. So people can look that up that way on the Distinguished yeah. Gentlemen Drive. Yeah, there'll um, be one in your city, Ed. There'll be one where you are so there might be one way take your little spots alpha spider and go join that i know i should huh you know i mean i'm you know i'm a big proponent to support however i can and things like that just like um you know i i i personally try to support like uh i don't know if you're familiar with the piston foundation out here in yes, the united states yeah so you know and um and you, like you saw earlier, the the Steve McQueen event, which is to raise money for the schools yeah. and stuff like that. So I'm a, yeah. I'm a big supporter of, of things like that. Um, yeah, I'll have to I'll have to check that out and see if yeah, uh, it's, a great it, it's thing. intriguing. Yeah. And, and I love I know, do you know, I know I'm a female and I know I'm supporting men's health, but I've grown up in motorsport and it's such a male dominating industry. So for me, it has such an it's, it's such a passion to me. And I've done so much money raising, you know, so much to raise money for for different cancers, breast cancer and ovarian cancer and stuff. Um, and they've got, they're such a big corporate. We have um, Stand Up For Cancer, which is a huge thing here, which is just vastly supported. So I just want to support these guys because it's like, come on, we need to raise a the flag a bit more for you guys <laughs> yeah well i mean even here i mean i'll tell you here in southern california where i am when we have a, an event that's called cruising for a cure which is to support uh prostate cancer and things like that yeah. so they have a it's you know it's kind of it's kind of a good event where um uh, but here it's we do more kind of like car shows not necessarily where yeah. i think people are a little lazy they don't want to go driving too much they want to go someplace park and show off their car yeah so so there's car shows and you go to the car show and you walk around and and at this at this event they're going to be doing you know they're going to have doctors and nurses that volunteer their time and, and their effort and they and they'll do prostate exams for free and give you the results okay. and all that kind yeah. of stuff so um, so it, it's a good, yeah. So even I'm not too sure when I think as well around September time out here for, uh, uh, cruising for a cure out here in Southern California. Um, tell us a little bit about, um, the, um, the time you spent in Georgia and, and, and how you were received in Georgia and, um, and that whole event out there. When was that? When did that take place? So I did, um, so when, when I came out of Formula One and I started, I wanted to go back and do my own thing and get back into cars. Um, I decided I wanted to do a rally. And I thought, well, do you know what? There's so many rally companies out there um, and they've done it, they've done it all. But for me as a female, I've kind of, I've, I've to show that I'm somebody different in this world because everyone's, oh yeah, what's new? So I've got to do it in a country that a rally's never been done in. So that's either Georgia, ex-Soviet Union Georgia, or China. Well, Georgia's a lot closer than China. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, you know what, if I if anything goes wrong, if I get kidnapped or, you know, it I, I don't know whether it's a really I didn't know whether it was a really corrupt, I mean, everybody kept saying, oh, don't go there, it's a dangerous country. And, you know, I was kind of warned off by the British. <laughs> 
sick, but I still. But what made you pick Georgia? What was it that picked that made you? Because I've never Georgia? been before. I just thought, well, we've got to do. If I've got to do a rally, I've got to do it somewhere where I've never been. So, um, I got on the very. Do you know? I got on the very, very first um, direct flight from London Gatwick to Tbilisi with Georgian Airways, and it was. I just and it was the last flight out of Gatwick, and I kept thinking, why isn't anybody going to Georgia? Why are there only like four people on this plane? <laughs> um, thinking, well, what have I let myself in for? And it was hilarious, Ed. As soon as the plane went left Gatwick, because it's the very last one, it's like somebody just switched switched the you know the off button because all the lights went out in the airport, <laughs> all on the runway, everything. So anyway, I arrived in Tbilisi, and it was. Do you know what? It, it was a little bit shocking driving from the airport to the hotel because um, there's a lot of, you know, um, buildings that the Russians had built to house all the Georgians in, you know, back in the day when the, when we were, the war was on and they were, they were there basically to build rockets for them and stuff. And it was... And it was really run down and I was thinking, oh God, I've, I've made such a bad mistake. But as soon as I got to the hotel, they're, oh, what are you here for? And I said, oh, well, I'm thinking of doing a driving route. Six o'clock in the morning. Oh, fabulous. Like a class. And I said, a classic car drive. Oh, my God, that's amazing. And so I, was, it, so I said, well, I'm just going to go to sleep for a bit and then I'll get up and have breakfast. I'll catch, you know. I said, yeah, yeah, don't worry, breakfast doesn't finish till 10. So I'm, I went for a couple of hours sleep, got up, went to breakfast. By the way, we've introduced you. So <laughs> eventually um, the Georgian um, tourist board, the lady from the Georgian tourist board was there and, and the guy, what can we do? How can we help you? Um, yeah, let me take you. And then somebody else was there from the British Georgian embassy to come and take me to... Uh -oh. Russ Darby, the racetrack. So they, I, I didn't, I literally didn't have, a, and I went onto a racetrack in Russ Darby. Um, so racing, I mean, there's no health and safety. I had a summer dress on, you know, open, open arms, a helmet on that was way too big for me, short skirt on, no, no overalls, no nothing. No, even any, it didn't even have any racing gloves. Yes, <laughs> you go, you'll be fine, you know. Um, and then, there were cameras there, so they were interviewing me. Oh my God, this is amazing. And I thought, oh my God, I can't back out now. There's just no way. Um, and then, um, yeah, the, the British embassy out there um, were brilliant. They supported me. Rums Hotel out there. Absolutely. Couldn't, do you know what? I couldn't recommend them enough. They were so kind, so helpful, so, so super, super friendly. Um, Levant is the guy there that, that runs it. Just... And all the stuff there, just Tamara, everyone just smiles on their faces and can't do enough for me. Um, then the mayor of Tbilisi got involved and I thought, I recognise you from somewhere. I had no idea. He was, he's an AC, um, AC Milan football player. And uh, anyway, so it's so, okay. This event goes, this, this, this was in September when I went. Went back a couple of times. This wonderful guy called pa Paul came and I mean I just I, I owe everything to that guy he was my oracle and still is and such a such a dear friend he showed me the whole of Georgia told me all the history you know wow. if you get out there you can touch touch that little monastery it's 14th century stone I'm like oh my god you know and just full of facts about Georgia and just knew his land back to front um so he, he plotted, helped me plot all the routes. Um, he helped me find all the classic cars. Then we had Georgian, there's a classic car museum there. So we collaborated with them. And anyway, I came back home and then and this was in the November and I phoned a couple of my friends and said, I phoned one friend up and I said to him, how do you fancy doing a rally in Georgia in May? Went, yeah that'd be great but how do I get my car over there I've got you know it takes forever to get a car over to America and I went no 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 oh not that Georgia not that Georgia <laughs> went, oh my god we're gonna get shot by Russians when we're out there <laughs> like, well, what are you thinking Zoe and I went well I can't back out <laughs> so yeah 
considered me in and then word spread and then I had you know I, I only wanted it to be quite small I only wanted about five cars really um about 10 people we had 14 cars oh wow we had Georgians joining as well in their Willis Jeeps and their American classic cars and um, we had 26 cars come in the start of the rally and 40 you know just for the for one day and then we had 14 do the whole week um and it was absolutely and that was in 2018 2019 word had got round and said can we come and do your rally <laughs> so i did another one again um in two, but this time in 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 the september time of 2019 which was beautiful with all the autumn leaves it's it's like your version of maryland and again with paul he, he pretty much did everything and uh, Radisson Hotel out there as well helped with some of it and just people were just falling over themselves to help me um, and interviews like nobody's because every now and again I kept seeing a billboard with my face on them what am I oh doing my goodness there? really you know? <laughs> yeah the turnout for the start of the very first rally which to, for us to set off was unbelievable we had a brass band and the mayor of Tbilisi was there doing a speech and just, I mean, it felt like the whole of Tbilisi was there. I remember driving in there for, from the hotel, driving to, driving to the square where we started. And my dad said to me, because <laughs> my dad come, he, he comes everywhere on all these rallies. And he said, um, I think that lot's for you, Zoe. And I'm like, don't be stupid. Like, yeah. <laughs> and as soon as we drove up, the cameras were in the window taking photographs. And yeah, so um, it was a little bit embarrassing. I'm not, I'm a little bit. But um, it was such an honor, it really was. Yeah, so then we did another one in 2019, which was, which was great. Um, and again, in a different part of Georgia. Um, and then COVID hit, so. Yeah. Wow. So do you see, I mean, in, in a country like Georgia, I mean, I mean I'm assuming that the majority of the, of the vehicles that, that are that are there are going to be Russian vehicles more than anything else. Yeah. Did you see I mean, other types of of uh, of vehicles in the, in the country? Only only in Tbilisi, um, but again, not not really. Did many? It, do do is European. is is there a a culture to? Uh, to restore, or renew these older cars? No, or? it's just they can't afford it. They, they can't you know, you've got it, to be yeah. really rich to have a, a European import. Yeah, um, but even even the, the Russian cars, they're not like the older ones. They're not really kind of trying to to restore them or. No, they don't have the they don't, they don't have the money, and those ones that. that do have the money, they don't want they don't want Russian cars. They want European cars. Um, yeah. So they'll have a collection in, in that, you know, if, if they're wealthy, they've, they've got a house in Europe somewhere. So they have their classic cars there. There, yeah. yeah there are the nice cars. It's, it's um, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, quite a lot of them would, you get in a taxi and you just think, how on earth is this car still running? running? And for a start, how on earth am I still alive getting to my end destination? You know, it's... <laughs> But, but, you know, the, the Mary Tbilisi is trying to clean all that up a bit, you know. Um, but it, it's it's very difficult. I mean, most of them, I mean, they don't even have driving licenses. You just pay to have a driving license. Yeah. So there's no Again, testing. Again, the mayor's, the mayor's, the mayor of Tbilisi is, is you know, is, is making that, you know, really cleaning that up a lot, you know, and, and checking and... Um, you know, I mean, everyone kept asking me was in, on the rally, well, what side of the road do they drive on? And it's said, well, whichever's in the shade. I mean, there is. <laughs> there is you know, it's whatever you know. gets you there. Yeah. And works. So just be careful going around a blind bend, you know. Yeah. Are the cars left, are the, are the cars there left hand drive cars or are they right hand cars? Uh, uh, there is a really? mixture, actually. There are. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Oh, interesting. Um, but most of them are left hand drive. Yeah. Do you, yeah. uh, do you find yourself, do you think you'll be going back there to do another one, another rally or what? No, I think, um, no, no I've done it now. Uh -huh. Um, I think the next time I, I want to concentrate on my drives here in the UK and then I want to 
take them over to America to you guys and also to into Europe as well so um but I've only just set my business up so I want to concentrate on the UK for, for, for this year anyway and then next year I'll do Europe and America so um probably do a drive plot a drive in America towards the end of this year um, what do you what do you think what do you think uh of doing in America what what's what have you given it much thought yet or yeah so I want to I literally want to get everybody off their sat naps yeah and fo stop following somebody and get a root book and do it themselves so you're all gonna be you're all you're not gonna miss out because you're all gonna be at the same destination at the end and there's all you know there's always gonna be enough food um, <laughs> but it just it, it's a little bit more fun um I know for you guys, quite a lot of you do your drives in supercars, um, you know, but if you want to go out and drive fast, go and do that on a circuit or go on your, on the freeway. Just come and just look up, keep saying to people, do a, do a route book because it gives you instructions and it literally says if you, you know, don't forget, don't, don't, you know, if you look to your left, you'll see such and such a thing. Well, most people have driven past it and never even seen that before, you know, so absolutely. I want them to look outside the car. It's not all about race, race, race. It's all yeah. about the scenery and enjoying the social side of it and the company and, um, you know, the food that's on offer, you know, so supporting local produce and local businesses. We've got some fantastic coffee stops and restaurants that are local that you know just go and turn up in your car you don't have to be at the same venue every single time you know it's it's uh that so i want to bring i want to bring that to you guys slowly 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 yeah well yeah. i mean it, it you know throughout that process if there's anything i can do to help from my end here by all means let me know and you know yeah, and i'll set what i'll do is i'll send you the links and an email to the distinguished gentleman's drive oh yeah yeah and um and ride and then also i'll send you a sample of what one of my root books looks like and then it gives you an idea yeah and um and you also the the georgia the georgia video that that i may be able to understand yeah the one yeah. i saw i couldn't it was in yeah. russian or whatever language they are yeah i was interviewed so many times so i'm not even sure which video you got on yeah. what used to amaze me is in georgia is they would i'd be on a on a tv network being interviewed but they'd have a they'd have an image of me racing at you know a goodwood or something in a classic car and i'm thinking all i'm thinking of is oh my god when i was in that e-type i spun it <laughs> I just hope they don't show that part. <laughs> you know? So, so, so I'm a little intrigued. I want to. I want to. I want to hear a little bit about your your time with F1. I mean, what was your role? What were you doing when you were? Yeah, with do you know what? I'm, I'm, I went in as an administrator, uh, as a secretary, because I, I I I just desperately wanted to be in a Formula One team, and then eventually I moved in and I helped out with events and sponsorship and all that stuff kind of stuff and you know logos on branding as we call it mm -hmm. you know, sure helmets, sure jack, um suits um car we did um bonneville as well land speed record so we did the um british american tobacco sponsored honda um a, a formula one car and to do the land speed record and um salt lakes on the salt lake so, so which we what, broke, but not when the Guinness Book of Records was there. Oh, nice. When so, around what year was all that going on? That must have been in the the the, oh, the about early ten years ago. <laughs> about ten years ago now. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Wow. Interesting. Any any uh, any uh, desire to uh, to to pursue pursue. Uh, uh williams or mclaren or anything like that no, was that any I of that in your... you know what it's it's all changed when i was in formula one it, we had 16 races now there's 20 odd there's one every single weekend and practically yeah yeah and it's it's become for me it's become too corporate um it used to be oh god some some people are going to shoot me for saying this but i used to think it used to be all about the, the, the driver as well as the team and, you know, and, and, and the me mechanics and everybody behind. Now it's all about which, 
which brand do you follow? Do you follow Mercedes or do you follow Red Bull or? It, it, uh, you're you're absolutely right. No, no, no. I agree with yeah. you. Yeah, it yeah. has really and become it, it, yeah become that and way. And it's because it is such a skill to be a Formula One driver. It's untrue. You know, I know how difficult it is racing a classic car with you know disc brakes and having to double de clutch and you know drum brakes. Sorry, and having to double de clutch. You know, and you're going into a corner and it's there's a lot of understeer or oversteer. You know, it's. And that's very difficult. But being in a Formula One car, it's, you know, it, it's, it's like being a fighter pilot. You know, you've got to, you've got to have your wits about you. Um, but it just seems a little bit more too, too corporate. That we, we used to have one every other weekend and then we used to have the whole of August off. Um, now it's every single weekend and it starts right in March now and finishes in November and... It doesn't seem seasonal anymore and it's all got a bit a bit catty as well it feels like people well, are scrapping yeah. over their handbags <laughs> well you know it's it's kind of funny i mean even watching watching like formula one right now and um you know it's kind of funny to see martin brundle you know doing the the walk yeah, and not knowing he's who hilarious. he's talking to, it's hilarious, isn't it? And yeah. uh, I, do you guys remember we used to have an absolute legend who he he, he was very he, he was like the Martin Brundle, um, called um Murray Walker, and he was the commentator to begin with. Just Google some of Murray Walker's quotes, it's unbelievable, <laughs> you know. So it's but Martin Brundle's pretty much taken in those steps. I remember him, was it in Miami? He went up to a guy and he said, I don't know who you are. Um, don't but know who you, look- you are, but you've got a load of people around you. And yeah. you know, I'm Martin Brundle from Sky News. And he went, I am a social media. Sensation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <then. Whatever. laughs> <We're, laughs> it doesn't, you know. Whatever. It doesn't, you know. And that walk has really just kind of become just kind of like uh, for people to be seen. And they, you can tell they're not really car enthusiasts or race enthusiasts. They're just there for the exposure. Um, And it kind of takes it, takes it away a little bit. I mean, it never used to be like that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you kind of sexy drivers, good looking girls and, and dangerous cars. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the, you know the 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 days of uh, of uh, you know James Hunt getting out of his car and and lighting a cigarette and smoking yeah. right afterwards with a beer are kind of yeah. gone, you know. And Nicky Louder and all that lot. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. I miss those characters. I really, you know, we had them all the way up to Damon Hill and all that lot as well. They were just. Such good fun, you know. Jack Villeneuve is just a laugh a minute, and he's just super funny. Um, but we those personalities have all gone now. It's it's a bit of a shame, really. yeah. It's kind of and it's kind of you know, like this last um, this last race in Miami because it was at the, the parking lot of that football. I kind of felt sad for the for the for the racers because you know that they're basically puppets for the media right now i mean to make them these guys race they just spent uh what two hours an hour and 40 minutes racing they're tired as all and then they they make them come out wearing a uh an american football helmet you know just to promote I know. Listen, I do 20 minutes of racing a classic car and I'm knackered. I have to have a lie down. Yeah. I mean, it was just, I mean, down in the pits. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, uh, I mean, I know they get paid a lot of money and I know that they get paid, you know, that they're told, Hey, you know, when the sponsors or when the media wants you to talk, you need to talk to them, even though they don't want to, but you know, I'm, eh, I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of a difficult thing. So what's what's next? What's next for Zoe? What's 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 the next thing coming up on the on on the chart? Yeah, so my website's going to be launched at the end of next year, so people will be able to. It'll just be called Driving with Zoe, um, and um, people will be able to download routes here in the UK for the, for drives in the UK. So 
if any of you guys are over and say you're in the Cotswolds or you're in Yorkshire or Scotland, find a route on my website, go download it or, or purchase it before you go and I'll, I'll post it to you or, or post it to the hotel that you're staying at. Um, and then, um, yeah, and then next um, I'm looking um, to expand it and, and take it to America and over to Europe. So very cool very yeah. cool very excited this thank week. you zoe so much for spending this time with me here uh it was great to learn a little bit about about what you're doing and and hope to see you and see stuff like like what you're doing here in the states i think it's interesting yeah. i think that it is it is one more facet of driving that we're just not exposed to so yeah i think i think that uh, it'd be nice to see it here so Thank you thank so much. You. Thanks for your time. Well, thank uh, you for having me. Yeah. Why don't you, again, say your email address again so everybody has it. Uh, uh, so my email address is... Not, yeah, your email and your website, yeah. So my email is zw at Zoe Whitaker. So that's Z-O-E-W-H-I-T-T-A-K-E-R.com. And the website, it will be launched. It will, if you just type in either Zoe Whitaker or Driving with Zoe, it will pop up. It's the first thing that comes up. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank Ed. you so much. We'll talk again. Yeah. See you later. Thanks, Bye. everything. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye.